Hi, I'm Ella and I work at Wool on the X, a yarn shop in Exeter. In November we released a book, Wool on the X book one, which we were very proud of. It uh, contains knitting patterns, crochet patterns, needle felting tutorials, a bread recipe and an essay. You can see some of the contents on the back here. Uh, we were really pleased and happy with the book, but we weren't able to have a book launch party due to COVID restrictions. We weren't even able to really share the samples with customers in the shop as we would normally like to. So I have them and I'd like to show you now. Um, after uh, an introduction by the shop founder Debbie Judd, the first pattern is Me But Shawl by Hannah Bowley. And this is a lovely chunky shawl. Um, this Merino was hand dyed at Wool on the X by Debbie um, and you cast on at one corner increasing and decreasing working mostly stocking stitch but with bits of uh, a lovely lace net patting, pattern um, you keep increasing until you get to a long cast off edge and it results in a shawl which is triangular but the edges just gently curve in which makes it really stay on nicely it just kind of hugs on it's really chunky and cozy I tend to wear shawls like this with the um, the long bits wrapped around and tucked under and the point at the bottom and that is very cozy you could also wear it open it's a bit tricky to do oh, <laughs> in an elegant way <laughs> there we go wrapped around with or without a shawl pin at the front and it's very wearable and stays on nicely. Next in the book we have Northern Lights Hat and Mitts by Debbie Judd. I um, have the hat here. This is done in an Aran weight so it's, it's relatively thick, quick to knit but um, cosy but not too hot. It's really, really lovely yarn. Um, you start at the bottom turned up the edge but you can also just pop it down however you prefer it. Um, start at the bottom work up doing a lovely lace pattern to the top and we don't have the original mitts I think Debbie's been wearing them but we do have one in a different colour here just popping it on and as you see it's mostly a wide ribbing pattern but also with a lace pattern slightly different but complementary to the hat and when you do them in the same colour it does make a good set um, and they are knit from the bottom up, thumb gusset, really comfortable, very wearable and being quite quick to knit I think these would make a great gift item. Next in the book we have Making Waves by Miria Rutger and this is a beautiful cowl knit and double knit weight yarn. Um, you cast on and then knit it flat. I think it starts with this um, kind of chevron wavy pattern with stripes. Then uh, it works into the slip stitch pattern which is very simple to do but very effective. You're only using one colour at a time and slipping stitches. And then there's another section of that but with a wider gap in between the dots so it's very effective um, but quite simple to do uh, finish with these lovely tassels um, you can wear it open like this which if I was popping out and I didn't know how cold I was going to be I would wear it like this and then if I did get chilly I would wrap it over double it up and it would keep me cozy with these adorable tassels you can add more tassels or leave them off however you like. You could also theoretically not join the edges and have it as a scarf. There's a lot of flexibility with this. Um, let's show you a close up again. Can I show you? Really lovely. Next we have Be Kind Wall Hanging by Trudy Johnston. And I have this behind me. Shall take it down before it falls down there, it keeps falling down. I've just popped it up with blue tack. It's a really, really light 
wall hanging would be ideal over a crib or something like that because it's ever so light um, but it's done in chunky yarn so it knits up quite quickly you start at the bottom here increasing um, and a bit of stranded um, lettering with a lovely message and then you fold over the top attach it to I mean you can attach it to a prettier bit of driftwood or whatever um, and then finish it with the lovely thick fringe so it's really effective next in the book we have Pit Pat by myself Ella Austin um, I have a choice here between a turn-up brim, which I have on this one here, which makes it extra thick and cosy across the ears, ideal for people who want to keep very warm, or no turn-up brim, also cosy. Um, you start at the bottom working in the round. Uh, a bit of stranded colour work which is actually ideal for beginners it's nice and simple with no long floats then decrease the crown and finish with a pom pom um, the leftover yarn for this is used in one of the needle felting tutorials which I'll show you in a minute next in the book we have By the Sea by Catherine Whelan um, this is a lovely short cowl, but theoretically it's very easy to make longer if you like the longer loop. Um, you cast on, uh, again a provisional cast on if you like, and um, work the lovely cable pattern. So effective and it looks like it would be really relaxing to knit. Uh, then when it's your desired length or the length specified, you can um, join it with Kitchener Stitch or three needle bind off or seam it, whichever technique you like best. And this is really cosy, so soft and uh, really wearable. I like the way it stands up nicely, it doesn't flop like a necklace, it actually keeps your neck warm. And that's really lovely. Next we have Arwen's Blanket by Jackie Millichap, uh, named for her granddaughter. And Jackie designed this one um, because she loves making blankets but isn't so keen on picking up the edges. So this is an all-in-one, one-piece blanket where the borders are knit together with the main piece. You cast on, work a bit of border, and then you start this um, slip stitch colour work pattern, which looks really effective, but again, you're only using one colour at a time. It's very simple. Uh, and at the same time you have small amounts um, wound off or you could just use additional balls to work an intarsia edge and that means that once you've got to the bottom you cast off and you don't have to worry about picking up stitches probably have to weave in the end still um, this is uh, knit in bow peep but you could use stash yarn um, just use whatever colours you like whatever double knit you've got hanging around and it could work really effectively as long as you've got enough of the main colour to work the borders and the patterning um, that could be a really effective use of leftover yarn next in the book we have Sheep Farmer Socks by Emma Skegdal and these are lovely double knit knee high socks so even though they're long they're double knit so they shouldn't take too long to make compared to a, a four ply knee high sock. Um, ideal for wellies. Um, you start at the top with the ribbing and then you have this beautiful colour work sheep section, nice bit of patterning and then you have some calf shaping, a short row heel and a contrast toe. And that calf shaping it looks quite dramatic until you put it on and then it really hugs the calf nicely. It's really comfortable. Next we come to the crochet section and we have River's Meat Cushion by Sam Linney. Um, this is done in an Aran weight yarn. You work 
from the bottom, working up using a mosaic technique, which once you get the hang of it, it's uh, easier than it looks. It's actually really quite addictive and good fun to work. Um, probably takes a little while to get used to what you're doing and then it will just flow really nicely and be a really relaxing project. And it looks so impressive. Um, we've got a, um, a kind of tonal variation in the yarn that we've used, the blue. So that's an effective use of a yarn like that with a solid colour for the other part. This is backed with fabric, but you could make another piece and sew them together. And it works really well. Next, we have Keyside Wrap by Rosina Northcott, who is also known as Zines and Roger. She's a local professional designer and has a really nice podcast. Um, she's designed this for us with um, it's a four ply yarn, but slightly on the plump side. Uh, you start at one corner, work some intarsia, and increasing as you go into a central point, and then you keep working, do some stripes, and finish in a solid colour. And I think it's it's like a little artwork, isn't it? It's really really effective. Very easy to wear, classic triangle shape. I would again wrap it round, tuck the ends underneath and fold that bit down perhaps, really comfortable. Love the colours, so there we go, look at those lovely stitches. The next pattern is Raising Sheep Garland by Abigail Setters. It's really adorable and we were so excited when it came into the shop because it, it came out even better than we thought it would. It's, um, it's done in lovely yarn and just look how cute is that. So effective. It's like Perfect combination of cute and classy. Really lovely piece. So you make um, the ball shapes and then I think you add the ears and I think you add a face on top as well and the the fleece is made it's um, you insert the hook work a bit and then insert the hook and just kind of um, let it flow and it, it's really effective. Yeah, I'll show you on this one as well. Really clever and their faces they just look so cute. <laughs> oh we love that one. Well we love them all. <laughs> it's a great collection. Um, next in the book we have Iska Mitts by Heather Gibbs. Um, these are done in a beautiful double knit yarn. Um, I don't crochet much myself but I'm so tempted by these because they came out gorgeous. They fit really nicely, really comfortable to wear and so beautiful. That stitch pattern is lovely. Um, to make these you start at the cuff, work a strip, then join it and then pick up stitches from the strip and work your way up with a lovely comfortable thumb gusset and a really nice edge as well. They are just lovely. And the last crochet pattern, Running Water Scarf by Joanna Bestwetherick. And this is um, such a versatile accessory because it's it's almost a scarf, almost a wrap, almost a shawl. It's kind of could be worn in any of those ways. So I would probably, for warmth, wear this as a scarf and it looks and feels lovely. But also I could see myself in the hotter months, I tend to um, I almost always sunburn myself. I'm not very clever at putting sun cream on so instead I could cover my shoulders 
like this and because it's a four ply yarn it's quite light and comfortable and of course beautiful I'll show you a close up it's um lovely chevron pattern really effective with kind of uh, some bits are more open than others you've got like a uh, short open stripes uh, and in one section as well you've got kind of the more closed pattern stripes and that's another beautiful one <laughs> another beautiful um, so next we come to the needle felting and the first one we have is Felted Bees by Lynn Dubry, who is a local artist who likes um, fibre art and nature and she made these really adorable needle felted bees perfect for a beginning felt project so if you've never needle felted before these are excellent to start with we do sell kits for them in the shop and they make such cute mobiles my daughters love these absolutely lovely um, I should say about how they're made you um first of all you needle felt the core wool then you apply the color and the stripes um, I think you use a really long needle to apply the eyes like beads I think and then you uh, fold the fluffy bit of merino to make the wings add the string if required and then you can hang it the next needle felting tutorial is Woodland Flora Felted Patch by Nicola Kelly and it's another one with these lovely step-by-step -step photos that make it quite simple to follow and that's the one that uses the leftover yarn from Pip Hat so you can make the hats and then use all the leftover yarn to make these beautiful patches. Um, she's made three designs um, they use a combination of needle felting and a little bit of embroidery Three beautiful woodland designs. Um, I think Nicola herself has used them as an actual patch so if you've got a moth hole in a garment that you love you could make one of these and then apply it uh, sew it directly onto the garment to cover the hole. That's a great way to repair things but you could also if you gently put a brooch backing on you could wear it with anything and I have had a go making those, they're really good fun such a great technique next in the book we have The Overnight Loaf by Annika Stevens which is a recipe that requires no kneading uh, so an ideal simple one to do frequently um, I know Annika makes it a lot and, and loves it it is um, described as being halfway to a sourdough which sounds really good to me and I'm keen to make that soon and finally in the book we have Finding a Knitting Society by Eleanor Cook and this is about Eleanor starting university and um, finding the knitting society being pleasantly surprised that there was one to start with picking up knitting again, finding friends and it has um, that lovely uh, the themes of community and finding a craft and finding people through craft that fits so well with uh, Wool on the X and what knitting means to us, crafting in general, fibre art. Um, and that's it. Uh, I've whizzed through all the samples and if you have any questions please let us know and if you'd like to see uh, closer pictures or any more details we have all of the, um, all of the information online. Um, a final thing to say that the book, the funds raised for the book are being split between Wool on the X social enterprises which include uh, Knit Stop and Knit Stop for Kids which are really great programs, social programs which are kind of on pause at the moment but we hate to resume them and of course we do do other social projects too uh, and also we're sharing some of the, um, the money with Knit for Peace which is a charity that we like to support whenever we can so we'll be sending them some money soon um, and that's it we're very pleased, very grateful to everyone who contributed to the book. It's such a lovely collection. 
and I hope you've enjoyed looking at it closer. Thank you. Bye.